All right, here we are with uh, true way analysis of variance. This is going to be rather quick, quick because exactly the same stuff that we've did with two way and one way, only another layer of complexity added on here. So we'll go ahead and start the script. We'll tile them. Um, now I do want to make a couple comments. One, the video. Um, well, let's do it this way. Uh, we'll start with uh, library multiple comparisons or multi comp library, uh, as usual. The next is the um, um, importing the data. So I'll make this a little bit wider so you can see it. Notice I did this the long way. I didn't have to. I could have done this more quickly, but I don't know why I did this the long way. Now, here's the data, the height data, from the video. And we're, we'll go through and we'll do the height data. Uh, we'll do the analysis with the height data from the video. I'll point out one, oddly enough, an arithmetic error in the video. And then we'll go back and do it with the height data from the worksheet. And we'll see that conclusions, oh well, the, the process is the same. Uh, let's not forget um, to make these as factors. Oops. I'll load in the height. Okay. So now if we want to look at the average in each of the cells. And again, this reflects, so far this reflects the video. And we've got the average in each of the cells. Here's the three-way interaction model. Again, dependent variable, tilde, and then the three independent variables, all separated by an asterisk because this is an interaction model. Then, of course, we'll do a summary. We'll get the analysis of variance table. And now let's not forget that eventually, OK, that's the analysis. Now for contrasts. Really not much to say here, other than I can't type. There we go. Import data. There we go. Um, so the contrast, same thing as in the two-way ANOVA. We have to create this interaction model, or this full interaction model. So we'll call this variable NPK enter. And then we just look to see what's in there. And again, it's every possible combination of the n's, the p's, and the k's for each data point. There's eight levels. And it's the n5, p5, k5, n5, p5, k5 for the second data point, n10, p5, k5, etc. And then we'll do mod 2, being just the looking somewhat like a one way analysis of variance. Um, but it's height versus that interaction, that full interaction. Then we'll look at the summary of it. Again, we'll see that the residuals have the same degrees of freedom. Some of the squares mean squared. And that this is actually the cell. Uh, the source here would be the cells uh, from chapter, chapter 9. Now in the video, we said, OK, let's compare the two levels of nitrogen, the nitrogen 5% with the nitrogen 10%. And as always, we got to figure out the order that R gives these, to, that R is putting these in. And if we look, there's the order. It switches back and forth between the ends. So again, we do a K matrix, the contrast matrix. And then we go through this line by line to see where it belongs. It's the way that we we did this, it was 5% minus 
minus 10%. Just so we know. So the plus ones will be on the n5%, and the minus ones will be on the n10%. So a zero for the intercept, as always. And this will be a minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one. Minus one. So again, we double check that our matrix is right. And as always, we'll do the GLHT of mod two lin fix equals that. Save it as a T. Summary of T and then a test equals adjusted of type equals none. And there we go. Now, when we did this by hand, or when I did this by hand, the L hat they got was negative 19. Um, on the board, that was wrong. Um, it comes from which one was it? Uh, y bar 112. Um, let's go back here and look at the sample statistics. Y bar 112. I wrote on the board is 9.5, I think. And it should have been 8.5. So the actual value of if I had done the arithmetic correctly, or if I actually just transferred the numbers over correctly, the L hat would be a negative 20. There is the denominator, that T statistic we calculated, it's 4.899. There's the p-value. Because the p-value is less than alpha, we can conclude that there is a significant difference in plant height due to the, what are we doing, N, due to the uh, nitrogen content. This average, this mu for N05 minus the mu for N10 is not equal to zero. Because the estimate is negative, that means in our sample, uh, Y bar for N10 is going to be greater than Y bar for N5. And that in conjunction with the p-value being less than alpha, we can conclude that these flowers or plants uh, grow higher with nitrogen 10 than they do with nitrogen 5 on average. OK, so this is the data from the, from the lecture. Uh, the data from the, um, the handout is going to be just slightly different. We're changing the height variable. And there that is, so you can copy that in. Then rerun everything again all the way down to mod 1. Again, do the interaction, the new model. Notice all we had to do is change our data, and we can rerun the entire model, uh, the entire analysis rather quickly. So here's the order. It happens to be the same order, so our K matrix is the same. Our GLHT again, and then our summary. We still conclude that they are significantly different. We still con can conclude that nitrogen 10 is significantly higher than nitrogen 5. So these are the answers, and this negative 85 will be the L hat when you do this with the data on the worksheet. Just as when we were doing it on the board, the L hat wherever that L hat is, was negative, or should have been, negative 20. And that's it. This is three-way interaction. Again, notice the process again is the same. We'll load in the data. And if, we're, if we eventually care about the contrasts, we're going to have to do this interaction, create a new model, 
the cell model, we can call that the cell model, and then do the contrasts. If we're not going to do any testing after the analysis of variance, and we kind of wasted our time because at most the analysis of variance is going to say, yes, there is a difference in some of these groups. I don't know which is different, just that at least one, maybe more. So it's those contrasts that allow the scientists to better understand the data and the relationships within the data. So that's it. This is Lecture 7, the R Companion through Wayanova, and I think this is the shortest one yet. Hope you have a great one. Take care.